With the pervasiveness of modern-day computers and smartphones throughout our lives, it's hard to believe that the world's first data storage and processing system was invented just 130 years ago. The United States Census of 1890 called for new thinking and new tools to process information about U.S. citizens. Herman Hollerith won the bid with his perforated card technology to store any type of data. It was the birth of the 80-column computer card, and it changed the world forever. Hollerith's invention stored any information required on a card by punching holes which could be read by mechanical or later electric sensors. The card became the primary storage device for 70 years until magnetic storage was developed and replaced it in the 1970s. In the late 1800s and early 1900s, businesses were booming and New York was earning its name, the Empire State. In 1896, Hollerith founded the Tabulating Machine Company in New York City. Businesses around the world found new uses to store and process their records on Hollerith's system. This is a Hollerith key punch machine from the early 1900s. A card is loaded from the left side and the operator slides the holder to the right. There are 12 keys on the keypad and they punch holes on the card from the top of the card to the bottom of the card. The left button releases the card and slides the holder to the left. The 80-column card, commonly used from the late 1800s through the 1960s, measured 7 inches wide by 3 inches tall. Each column was numbered 1 through 80, and each row was labeled with 0 through 9. 80 characters of data could be stored on each card. The key punch machine was simple to operate, but precise and reliable. In addition to 0 through 9, however, it could store A to Z characters as well by pressing two keys together in a column. That would produce two punches in a column, which can be read as letters A to Z. Behind the card carriage, a pointer indicates on the scale which column you're going to punch. This key punch uses no electricity or batteries. It's completely manual. On the back of the key punch, a spring and weight assembly is wound when the user loads the card. The spring's stored energy releases the card when keys are pressed or when the card is released. The flexibility and reliability of Herman Hollerith's system of using a punch card to store data was a huge success in the business world and in the public sector. The ability to punch the cards with any information needed provided endless applications. Millions of people learned to operate a key punch, including these German women in a keying competition in Berlin. Recording and storing the data on cards was only half the system, however. Businesses of the day had a need for management information from the cards. Hollerith's tabulating machines could add up selected columns of data from a stack of cards or sort them alphabetically or numerically on any column. The tabulating machine was a testament to the mechanical abilities of the day with counters which could add up any of the columns from a stack of cards at lightning speeds. In 1911, Hollerith's company became part of the Computing, Tabulating, and Recording Company, which was renamed International Business Machines in 1924. Electric tabulators replaced mechanical ones with vacuum tubes and plug boards like this one, which allowed for selecting which records should be added or subtracted. It was like an early programming language. Throughout the mid-1900s, countless businesses, government agencies, and schools depended on their stacks of cards. IBM's machines provided the ability to organize and run their operations, reading through the cards of data at amazing speeds. They were the information backbone of the industrial age.
As the use of cards for data storage grew, the cards themselves evolved. Although the 80-column card remained very common, punch tapes were also used to store programs and data. In an early form of attaching pictures to your email, it was possible to insert microfiche into the cards, simplifying retrieval of key information. These 1950-era cards from the United States Department of Defense are great examples of how blueprints could be preserved and organized for fast retrieval. New professions and industries were created around data processing, including systems engineering, programming, key punch operators, and data center professionals. In 1964, IBM introduced the O29 card punch. My first job at 15 years of age was as a key punch operator on an O29 at Chilton Publishing in Philadelphia. The next year, while still a high school student, I was the supervisor for data entry at Chilton, leading the data entry for the federal government's Equal Employment Opportunity Program. IBM later developed the 96 column card, which stored three rows of 32 characters, 20% more data than the 80 column card, and less than half the card size. That was data storage from 1890 well into the 1970s, over to 70 years of enabling industrial expansion. All of today's phone and computer technology, from this iPhone to supercomputers, can trace their development directly back to Herman Hollerith's 80 column cards, the world's first machine readable data storage. IBM invented the first hard disk drive in 1956. In 1971, IBM introduced the first diskette, similar to a, the larger diskette shown here, which was used on the PC AT in 1981. Electronic memory is all based on IBM's core memory technology, which took Apollo to the moon in the 1960s. This PC diskette held 320K of data. The original PC diskette had a storage equivalent to a 29-inch stack of 80-column cards, about an average dog's height. The iconic 3.5-inch diskette had a capacity up to 1.44 megabytes of data, that's the equivalent storage capacity of a stack of cards 11 feet high. Looking at today's technology, this 64 gigabyte SD card has the storage capacity of a stack of cards reaching into space 90 miles high. And finally, this iPhone has 512 gigabytes of storage. That's equivalent to a stack of Holler's cards reaching three times as high as the International Space Station a 724 mile high stack of cards. That's how much technology has changed in the last 50 years. Thanks, Herman.